I just finished my travels across Central America. And 12 weeks ago, I didn't know any Spanish. I've never been to Central America, and I've never solo backpacked in my life. But after these 12 weeks, I've learned how to travel around comfortably with my Spanish. I'm confident in going to any new country now in Latin America, and have learned a lot of different skills on solo backpacking in general. When I initially started this travel, I met so many other travelers that have been going for months on end and they had so much confidence in their travels because they would go to the next city not really knowing what to do, where to stay, and they never had data and that really surprised me. I was really earning to be that confident in my travel. And after 12 weeks, I genuinely feel like I have that confidence now simply because other travelers that are heading north are asking, where are you going? What are you doing? And how do I gain that confidence? And I can boil it down to, I'd say, three big lessons that I've learned while traveling in Central America. Allow yourself to be spontaneous, learn to be okay with the bad experiences, and follow your heart. Now, the first step is being spontaneous. And you can do this by being A, flexible with your schedule, and B, listening to those recommendations. Two very big examples of this for me was Cancun. Cancun, I stayed there for two weeks, and I got bored of the city within the first week, and I wasn't really able to travel anywhere else as I had already paid for the other week in Cancun. After staying two weeks in Cancun, I never really stayed in any place longer than one to four days to allow for flexibility. And for recommendations, allow yourself to listen to that and say, why not? I remember <laughs> my friends in Nicaragua, we were at a pool party. No one was in the pool and we were only in our underwear to actually jump in. At the time I was hesitant, but afterwards we started a pool party with everyone in their underwear. <laughs> and I love those two little instances, but to expand on them, it was more like Lake Atitlan. When I arrived in Lake Atitlan, I only had planned a week of Spanish there. But after three days, I realized there's so much more to do around the lake. There's several cities that you can boat to, and Spanish was a huge thing to learn there. So I easily decided to say I was going to stay another week. And Guatemala has now been one of the countries I've stayed the longest because I knew I was going to love the environment, love the culture, the explorations that I was going to have, the people I was going to meet, and it didn't disappoint. I truly love Lake Atitlan, and I'm so happy that I did spend two weeks there. Now, on the flip side, in Nicaragua, I had no plans. And I was always changing hostel to hostel almost every one to three days. Because when I arrived, I had no plans, but everyone kept recommending things to do in the next city or what to do on what days. And every single day, it seemed like it was just carrying me through. And in a blur, two weeks had gone by and I traveled all of Nicaragua just based off recommendations and being able to be flexible, changing hostels every one to three days. And my last favorite example was Santa Catalina. I arrived in that city not expecting anything. I saw it was very big to go snorkeling, diving, but I kind of had already done that in the previous city, Boca del Toro. And I was like, ah, there's nothing really in town. I think I'm going to leave to Panama City the next day. When I woke up, I packed everything and was ready to go. And someone told me, you can't leave. This is the best snorkeling experience I've experienced in my life. And with that recommendation, I was like, all right, well, I, with that, I can't leave. So I signed up for a tour 30 minutes before I left. And it was the most beautiful snorkeling I've ever experienced. I was able to see dolphins within 15 minutes. I saw a whale, unfortunately I couldn't capture that part, but I did find beautiful scenery and coral reefs, sharks, turtles. crocodiles, thousands of fish, and my tour guide was even able to get my GoPro 
to go underneath the coral reef and find an octopus. Genuinely, I'm so happy that I was able to attend and do that tour based off a stranger's recommendation. Now, the next thing that I learned was being okay with the bad experiences. As a traveler, you go through a lot of bad experiences and it puts you really low. And I'll admit, on Instagram, my travels look amazing because I rarely post the bad experiences. There are a few hiccups here and there, such as canceled flights or maybe a motorcycle accident, but some things aren't ever recorded or ever posted. These things might be the shared bathrooms. They're terrible. <laughs> or living out of a backpack, or every time I've gone on a motorcycle, there's a $40 fee due to crashes or towing fees. We're always in discomfort as travelers, but there's a beauty in that part. Now, the beauty comes from quite a vulgar statement, and I think every traveler knows this statement. What the f am I doing here? Is this even worth it? And no matter how long you travel, this is always going to pop up, no matter how prepared you are. And in our travels, there's a lot of beauty in it. You get to meet amazing people, have amazing adventures, see things you would otherwise never see in your regular life. But with those highs come a lot of lows. And there's a quote I heard on TikTok that really resonated with me. When you're looking at a heart monitor, it has its highs and lows. But when you're in control of that and you take the average and put it in the middle, you flatline. Now, this quote really resonated with me because the highs that I feel are so high, I love it. But then the lows I experience are so low, it's depressing. But I'm glad that I feel the lows because if I feel okay or just average and stagnant, I don't think I'm living life properly. Life is about the highs and lows, and if you just take the average of it, are you really living a fruitful life? So every time I feel low, I'm reminded about this quote so that I know I haven't flatlined. Now the last and most important lesson that I've learned is to follow your heart. Now you might be telling yourself, well, obviously, but in the moment, it, sometimes it could be overlooked. You might be peer pressured into doing something that you might not want to do. Now, I'm not talking about something crazy like drugs, but simply going out for dinner. Everyone has different objectives and meaning as to why they're traveling. For me, it's to learn the necessary skills to inspire others. Now, these travels would be a lot easier if I didn't have to record and film everything and try to put everything together in a motivational and inspiring way. I could simply go out and party, drink, have an adventure of my life, but I truly inspire to put together a meaningful video, something that's motivational and gives you perspective into my travels and experiences to inspire others to actually attempt this and maybe change a small thing in their life just for the better. This is genuinely my passion and following my heart has brought me the most happiness. Now, I have two huge highlights of this trip and it's not what you'd expect. I was definitely happy and excited to be climbing Akatenango, seeing the sunrise or seeing the sunrise across Lake Atitlan snorkeling in Santa Catalina, boarding down a volcano in Nicaragua, driving around in Omotepe, seeing volcanoes in Santa Ana in El Salvador, traveling with friends that I don't think I would ever meet otherwise. There's so many adventures across my entire travels that I wouldn't replace with anything, but the two big highlights of this trip were inspiring others. I've received messages from old friends saying how amazing my travels are and how it's inspired them to maybe go out a little more often. And also inspiring strangers. I didn't feel like I had much of an impact on other individuals, but 
through these travels, I've learned that my personality has been able to leave a positive impact on others. And there's nothing that can really be more value than that for me. Following your heart is very difficult. It's not the most convenient thing in any situation. You have to give up a lot. But through that, I've found the most happiness in my travels. And this doesn't only apply to my travels, it's life. But by combining these three things, spontaneity, learning to be okay with the bad, and following your heart, I genuinely think you can travel and be so much more confident in where you're going, what you're doing, and just have an amazing time and experience. Something that you can share and inspire others to do. Central America has taught me so much. It's taught me how to be a lot more spontaneous. It's given me a lot of bad experiences to remind me that there's always gonna be lows and you'll experience some highs as well. And most importantly, it continues to test my heart to make sure it's in the right spot. I will see you in South America.